But if you have a bipolar lesion, so if you have a lesion on the femur, lesion on the tibia, root tear, meniscus extrusion, lesion on the tibia, lesion on the femur, and hyperintensity on the femur and tibia condyle, then you are almost going into the stage that you can consider unicondylar So that is called as a UKA. Because in this stage, if you have a bipolar lesion on of the cartilage on the femur and tibia, anterior medial arthritis of the knee, then these conditions cannot be adequately addressed by an arthroscopic modality. And if this much is the lesion, then total knee replacement is an overdue. Because your lateral compartment will be normal and your patella will be normal. So at this point of uh, this, at this stage, you can consider doing a procedure what is called as a unicondylar knee replacement. This is also called as a microplasty procedure. And there are two kinds of uh, unicondylar knee replacements which are described. One is a mobile bearing uh, and one is a fixed bearing. The mobile bearing is the Oxford group which is promoted by Zimmer Biomet. And the fixed bearing are number of others like from Stryker and Lemke. If you have an ACL intact, you can do a mobile bearing. But if you have an ACL torn, you cannot do a mobile bearing. But the advantage of doing a mobile bearing knee is its survivorship is long and the rate of wear is very, very low in a mobile bearing. In a fixed bearing knee, the wear rates and rate of loosening is high. So, the longevity of those prostheses of fixed bearing unicondylar knee is relatively less as compared to a mobile bearing unicondylar knee. So, by and large, as an all, if you talk about unicondylar prosthesis, we usually recommend a mobile bearing prosthesis with, but it should always be considered when your ACL is intact. And you cannot do a mobile bearing prosthesis if the ACL is torn. Okay. Now, if we talk about this microplastic procedure or a mobile bearing procedure, many many uh, students uh, argue that uh, total knee replacement is a very uh, very uh, predictable surgery and with a very good long term result. So why cannot we do a total knee replacement for these kind of conditions? So there are some advantages in doing a microplasty or a mobile bearing uni compartment to knee arthroplasty as compared to a total knee arthroplasty. So what are they? So there are some surgical result oriented factor and some medical factors. So let's talk about one by one the advantages of unicondylar knee over a total knee replacement in this kind of scenario which we have talked. Okay. So the longevity is almost the same. So if you talk about if you are doing this particular indication the longevity of unicondylar mobile bearing knee is almost similar to a total knee replacement that is about 15 to 20 years good results in long term studies if you do it in a proper indication number one number two you have an intact acl and an intact pcl after this surgery so you have a better proprioception so if you talk about results so like you say that if after a total knee replacement the patient will be able to walk normally or walk you do patient will be able to do a brisk walk after this microplasty surgery the patient will be able to jog or light run so he will be able to do a more rigorous activity he will be more active he can do active cycling he can do active jogging and light running also with a microplastic procedure as compared to a total replacement procedure the Surgical, uh, interventional surgical uh, is less, the duration of hospital stay is less, you can uh, uh, have a faster or a quicker recovery, uh, hospitalization is less, back to activity you are faster. So these are other advantages. If you talk about medical part, so the chances of medical complications are less. Okay. So, sometimes if these indications are fulfilled, you can also do this surgery in elderly population, like 70 to 80 years of age, sometimes you have a high risk patient. So, medical risks are less. Medical risks like DVT, 
like uh, thrombosis, uh, like need of blood transfusion. So all other medical comorbid risk, risk of cardiovascular events is less in uni as compared to total because the magnitude of the surgery is smaller. The chances of infection overall is half in a uni condylar replacement as compared to total knee replacement. So we talk about 1% risk of infection in a total knee replacement and this is about 0.5%. So the overall risk of infection is less. So if these indications are satisfied, then in a properly indicated patient, a uni condylar knee replacement or a microplasty will be a good option. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, why is it called a microplasty technique? So, microplasty is a basically an instrumentation technique and it is called because uh, this special instrumentation are developed which can do the surgery with minimal incision and minimal uh, damage to the soft tissue. So, that is called, that is why it is called as a microplasty. The microplasty is basically an instrumentation technique which was developed by uh, biomedical. So, so, if a person has done uh, unicondylar knee replacement and subsequently he develops lateral compartment osteoarthritis also, so can this UKR be easily turned into? Yes, this is it is the advantage of UKR over a STO because sometimes you have a patient in which you can do a U, UKR and STO both. With same indication, you can do an STO also and you can do a UKR also. But revising a STO is much more difficult than revising a uni. So revision of uni is easy. You have to use the same incision, same cuts. You have to just remove the implants, make cuts and do the, do the TKR as it is. The anatomy of the knee is not changed as compared to a high tendon osteoarthritis. So conversion of uni to a total knee replacement is not as difficult a surgery as conversion of a HTO to a total knee replacement surgery. So what we I just so you can never get infected. So uh, in revision we do the same you can or uh, so this is a difficult question. If infection is always a trouble, so infection in any uh, any uh, orthopedic surgery will be an issue. So that will be the treatment has to be individualized. Sometimes you need to do a debridement, removal of implant, and you do the uni uh, totally in the uh, in the other setting. Sometimes you can do just depending on the culture reports, you need to uh, do wash and you, uh, you can read the medicine. But uh, infection is a uh, infection becomes a case specific thing. So if there is an infection after a unique condylar knee replacement, you have to address it appropriately as per the condition. There is no uh, no written uh, written norms as to how an infection after a unique condylar knee should be treated. You have to individualize it. Individualize it and treat it according to the same patient. Thank you.